The Isle and Path of Titans has long been considered the leading games in dinosaur survival genre. Now the question, which one are superior? An age-old question, or at least until Path of Titans got good enough to be considered competition. Hello, my name is Adam Vokter, and before I even start, there are something I need to clarify. This is not a video about figuring out which one is a god-given gift, and the other one being an absolute trash which should be dumped into the ocean. Don't dump trash into the ocean. This is about reviewing the game and picking out the pros and cons of them. If you want to interpret this video as a which one is the best video, then that is your choice, not my responsibility out of my hands. I'm an adult. I have a few topics which I wish to cover, so without further ado, let's just hop into it. The plot of the games, or the overall goal of the games, are pretty simple. You get to choose what creature you want to play, then you choose a place where you want to spawn, and after hitting that enter, you are now spawned into the game as the young version of the creature you chose. The goal is simple. Eat, grow, survive. Become bigger. Once you're an adult, it is up to you if you want to go around fighting people or help other people grow. Pretty understandable so far, correct? The aspect are simple. Just grow and become an adult. But the charm of these games is the journey, the adventure to become an adult. The growth system lets you grow over time, and both of these games have their own version of the growth system. Let's start off first with the Isle. The Isle has a passive growth system, which means you will grow over time no matter what you're doing. Of course, the growth speed varies between the creatures. In earlier days, the Isle has faced problems with players just camping areas they deemed safe after they filled up on food and water and just waited for their passive growth to reach adulthood. This problem has been somewhat resolved with the introduction of the diet system. This is a system that gives out conditions and when they are met, you will be rewarded with certain stat boost. If these conditions are not met, the player will be punished with certain negative effects that will make survival more difficult. This encouraged the player to move around the map, increasing the chances of contact with other players, which will greatly increase the thrill of the game. Path of Titan are similar, you join the server, you choose a creature, you spawn into the server, and that's about where the similarities end. Instead of a diet system, Path of Titans has a quest system. Once these quests are completed, you will be rewarded with a certain amount of growth depending on the difficulties and the colors of the quest. However, in Path of Titans, there are no passive growth on the official servers. You can only grow by quest. However, on community servers, it is up to the server owner if he or she wishes to enable passive growth, among other things. On the official servers, you will not grow unless you do quests. This will encourage players to move around and fulfill quests in different areas. If you really think about it, these growth systems are kind of similar, you just walk around the map trying to fulfill the requirements to grow. The big difference, however, is how the game will punish you if you should die. On the Isle, once you die, it doesn't matter how, you will lose all of your progress and you will have to start at the beginning as a juvenile. Pretty harsh, and it's like death is a consequence. Path of Titans are different. Once you die, you can just spawn right back in, and you will only have lost just a bit of progress. This way of punishing people is less off-putting for new players. Yes, it sucks to die, but... Since you don't lose everything after becoming an adult, it is a bit more easier to pick yourself back up and just regrow what you lost. Now this is subjective, but I'll say this to what it's worth. I actually do kinda like the harsh punishment of the Isle, and no I'm not a masochist. The risk of losing everything will make the game so much more intense. You will have to do everything to live. What, you believe survival is a game? Jokes aside, what we have here are two games with basically similar plots. You just spawn into a world, 
do whatever you can to grow up and be an adult. And then after that you kinda just let fate take the wheel. What, you think you control how you die? Well in most cases yes, but mostly also no. Now it is up to the player if you like the more realistic take on death on the aisle, or the more prayer friendly on Path of Titan. Again, I'm not gonna say which one is superior to the other, that is up for you to decide. However, I will give you my opinion. While I do like the realistic take on death on the aisle, having the blood pump when shit does go down is exhilarating and make good for good experience. However, if I do lose a creature at adult stage, I do like being able to only having to play like 10 or 20 minutes to get it back to adult stage and not 2 to 3 hours. Once I gotten it back to adult stage, I can just go back and killing whoever killed me in the first place. Petty? Yes. Below me? Absolutely not. I mentioned how the games encourages the players to explore the maps. A pretty good choice because the maps are one of the best selling points of the games. Both games offers a large and beautiful map for players to explore. Of course, being one of the best selling points, they must of course look gorgeous. The games also need to be able to be run properly, so you'll be able to enjoy as much as possible and not be turned into shit. Now, I'm sure that some of you guys doesn't like me talking bad about the aisle, thinking that I'm wrong and stupid. Well, first of all, I don't care for your opinion, I just say as I experience. I don't disagree with the stupid part though. Now, unfortunately, I will have to say that I have had problems running the aisle smoothly. Some servers does a better job running the game compared to the officials, but again that depends on the server and your own internet connection. As far as lag goes, it's okay as long as it doesn't completely destroy your gameplay. With FPS and graphics, I have experienced a big quality drop once you meet other people. Of course, the aisle is a big game and the more your computer has to render, it's going to be a lot more difficult to run it smoothly. That is not to say that Fatal Titan doesn't have lag issues or even connection issues. With graphics and FPS being a topic I don't really have a conclusion on, at least for connection issues, there has been a few cases. Worst case being kicked out of the game, leaving your creature open and vulnerable for any attacking creatures. Still, I must say I have been able to run Battle Titans more smoothly compared to the aisle. Like I said, on the aisle, the more your computer has to render, the less smoothly it will run. Tolerance level to each player are subjective, but in my case, if I stay in the red zone of FPS, then it's just barely to tolerable for me. If you think about it, Battle Titans can be run on console, computers and smartphones. Consoles aside, being able to run on smartphones should speak volumes on how Battle Titans are much more device friendly compared to the aisle. Yes, the quality of the games on the smartphone devices might be potato and you might crash more often than you'd like. But just take a moment to think, do you think the aisle will be able to run on smartphones? I don't know, I'm not a computer guy so I can't really give you an answer on that. While I have to give it to Battle Titans for being more device friendly, when it comes to graphics, I just think the games are equal. Ray tracing and graphics works well in both games and I don't really have any complaints. Well, there's one thing, but it's not really a complaint. You see, during nighttime in Path of Titans, it does become dark, but it's still recognizable, you can still see to some degree. Heck, in my opinion, the darkest hours aren't even during night, it's during sundown and sunrise. It becomes even worse when you are in dense forest and you won't even spot them before they are right on top of you. On the aisle, however, once it becomes nighttime, it becomes nighttime. Unless you're in an area where the moon shines bright, you won't even be able to see that far in front of you. During these times, you will be engaging your night vision, but your sight are limited much more than during the day. If this will work with you or against you, eh, kind of 50-50. The aisle does have a sense system that will make throwing off enemies a bit more challenging.
However, the lag might actually work in your favor and you just have to make sure and hope that they don't want to make the effort tracking you down. Like I said, this is not really a complaint. The extra darkness does increase the horror aspect of the game and I am all for it. The darkness aren't the only environmental challenge you'll face. The diet system makes you walk around the map, kinda of forcing you to meet other people. Some may be bloody, some may not. Path of Titan does the same, you have to walk around the map to find quests, which you then have to fulfill and then you'll get growth. In my opinion, Path of Titan does this job a bit better than the Isle. Let's say you play Patchy on the Isle and you need a food that can only be found here or here. You can bet on that there are people already there, those who need the resources themselves or those who just camp the area to kill you. The quest system in Path of Titans have made it so you can find these quests pretty much everywhere and you have so many options that you don't really need to worry about campers. Path of Titans has done a wonderful job having an interactive map but also a diverse map. Currently, the Isle are just jungle, plains and swamp with a few rock formations there and there. Path of Titans Gondwa has beaches, different variation of forest, deserts, green valleys, plains, canyons, failure of a paint project, you get the point. And so does Path of Titans in terms of interactive map and map design. Enough about PvE, time for PvP. And for those who usually seen one of my older videos, you will know that I am a bit of a veteran when it comes to PvP on Path of Titans. Now, uh, because I no doubt have more experience in PvP with Path of Titans than I have the Isle, you would probably think that my opinions are a bit based, and you'd be right. So I'm not gonna say too much about Path of Titans PvP. I'll just say my opinions after I said a bit about the Isles PvP. Now if we talk about the Isle Legacy, then the combat was a bit basic, just running around and biting. On the Rima, however, the combat has gotten a lot more interesting. Most of the creatures are getting new abilities of their own. They have additional attacks rather than just a basic attack. For example, Kanos have a headbutt and not just bite attack. Dinosuchus, while not a legacy creature, has bite and a lunge ability. Raptors has a bite and latch on ability. Other creatures have a temporarily buff to their stat like the galley speed buff. Case in point, I think the Isle has gotten a lot better when it comes to their PvP. Unfortunately, surprise surprise, I still prefer the combat and PvP in Paddle Titans. Not only do you have a bit more freedom when it comes to what type of abilities your creature shall have, you can really invest in what type of creature your creature shall be. It can be a speed build, a tank build, or just a balanced creature. Let's be honest, we all knew I was going to be a bit base when it comes to PvP in these games, and I'm just gonna drop the topic here and just go on to the next topic. Like other stuff the games offers. I just wanna get one thing out of the way, the models. I like them all equally, I don't see any problems with them, and yeah, I just like them both equally. The choices of creatures for the Isle are still pretty limited. Of course, this is just temporarily. More creatures will be added later, and I look forward to that. But for now, when it comes to choices of creature, Metal Titan takes that. As a matter of fact, in addition to the official creatures, there are also modded creatures. Brought to you by mod developers and also expands the choices you have. Some creatures aren't even dinosaurs. As far as lore goes, it is pretty obvious that the Isle are a pretty standard Jurassic Park scenario. In layman terms, basically humanity did a big dumb stupid, humanity lost control over big dumb stupid, humanity fled from big dumb stupid, and now big dumb stupid roams the Isle without humanity to control it. Of course, there are more to this lore than just that, but this is not a lore video, so I'm just gonna sum it up as that. As far as the lore with Path of Titans, it's pretty up for debate. Heck, I even made a lore video about that not long ago. You can check it out here. As a matter of fact, I don't believe there is any official lore over Path of Titans yet. So, to sum it up, in terms of goal of the game, well, pretty similar. 
and so all the usual gameplay. You just hatch into the world, grow a creature, become adult, and then fate decides your end. I will say I lean a bit more towards Path of Titan's more lenient death, but of course, that's me. When it comes to the technical stuff of the games, I can't really say for certain. I've experienced difficulties with both of them, but I will have to say when it comes to computer and or just device friendliness, I have to lean more towards Path of Titans. In terms of pure looks and if the graphics aren't having a stroke, then I'll just say they're kinda equal. When it comes to the PvE and PvP experience, I'll just throw it out there, my PvP experience are pretty biased, so I'm just gonna skip that. But in PvE, I will say this, if I want a more realistic, more realism, and more adrenaline rush, I go for the Isle. PvP, Path of Titans, and then PvE, the Isle. Perfectly balanced. Again, I have to double down on that this video was not meant to say which one of these games are superior over the other. I mean, if you want to interpret as such and you get angry over it, then that is your own fault. Now, I've given you my opinions, but there is something I want all of you to do. And that is pretty simple. Don't listen to me. Go play both of the games yourself and see what you think. After all, what is more important to you than your own opinions? Despite their flaws, I've enjoyed both games. And maybe you will too. In any case, I look forward to what the games has to offer in the future. And you can bet that I will be there to make video out of it. And with that, I'ma go make a new video. Goodbye.